master of the palace. I will thrust you down from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judea. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands.
Jeremiah, for a wonderful trial. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. I'm Father Barron. I'm the pastor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and I'm very pleased and privileged to be here with you this afternoon. Oh, quite a few years ago, a friend of mine called me up, a friend from church, and says, Hey, I got this new song I want you to listen to. It's like 20 years ago now. The song was by um, Joan Osborne. The song was a one hit wonder. What if God was one of us? And she went on to say, I got this, this is a great song. I think this woman is searching for faith and it would be a great story if this song were true. What? It'd be a great story, wouldn't it, if this song were true? Uh, hold on a second here. <laughs> where do you go to church? Well, I go with you. Uh-huh, you're Catholic, right? Yeah. And you don't know? What do you mean? What do you mean I don't know? Don't you know that God is one of us? Well, I suppose we put it that way. Because, after all, when... Jesus asked his disciples in the gospel, who do people say that I am? This was a normal question at that time. It wasn't the prideful sense that I want to know what people are saying about me so that I can think good about myself. It was the culture at the time was very much into, you were seen through others' eyes. It was all about the community and not about the individual. So when the people are saying things about Jesus Christ, it's the community that was really being shown who this person was. And indeed, who he is. But when he so when he said that, that would have not shocked the disciples at all. It would have just been a normal question. Something that they would have just discussed as they were walking along, because after all, it was a pretty long walk from where they were to Caesarea Philippi. It was probably three or four days that it took them to get there. And so they were just discussing things along the way. And so when Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? They're all like, uh, uh, well, um, hmm. And Peter, I can just imagine, good old Peter, stammering out, um, well, you, uh, uh, you are, you are uh, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And all the other disciples went, huh? And Peter saying, and Jesus saying, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so, 
I name you Peter. Now, this is an interesting point because Peter means rock in Greek. And it's actually the female form of the verb. Or not the verb, the form of the noun, excuse me. And so it says that it's setting up the whole bride and bridegroom, that Christ is the bridegroom and the church is the bride of Christ. And it's building upon what is the foundation of the church. Because after all, let's think about this for a second. If Peter is given all this great gift of binding and loosing, which is a supreme gift of God, Jesus is giving that gift to the church. And he's saying to the church, you have the ability to bind and to loose. You have the ability to say what is and what is not. And it's not something that I'm going to overthrow or overdo. And it's a whole sense that I am bringing you to be one with me. But who did he give this power to? He gave it to Peter. And what do we know about Peter? Peter had what I like to call mint flavored shoes disease. He used to stick his foot in his mouth all the time. He would say things like, of great faith, and then the next thing he's, Jesus is telling him, get behind me, Satan. And he even denied him three times when Jesus was hanging on the cross. So Jesus is giving him this power. Jesus is giving him this authority. But what does Peter have beyond anyone else? Why wouldn't he give it to somebody more worthy? Why wouldn't he give it to somebody more accomplished? Why wouldn't he give it to somebody else, one of these other disciples who didn't deserve him? Why wouldn't he give it to John, who stood by his mother at the cross? Why didn't he give it to anybody else? It's because of who Peter was and is, and how much Peter had the ability to love. And so, what is our church built on? It's built on the foundation of love built on the foundation of love of Jesus Christ and of Jesus Christ wanting to be in union with the church. And so we come as church. Because what is the church? The church is all of us. It's all the people, the billion people around the world. That is the church. And that is how the love of God is mediated to the world. That is how the love of God is spread to the world. And so what does that mean for us? Because that has great meaning for us. Because we see people all the time saying, Oh, I don't need the church. I can just find God on my own. I don't need to go to confession. I can just go to God and say I'm sorry. I can go here or I can go there and just find God, don't need the church, etc., etc. But that's just like saying, oh, I don't need my hand or I don't need my foot. I don't need my right eye. It's like saying, I don't need a part of myself or I don't need anybody else around me. We need each other. We need body of Christ to help us find and answer the question that Jesus Christ is still asking us today. Who do you say that I am? How do we answer that question? How do we answer that question when it's asked between two of us? How do we answer that question when it's asked between someone who's just driving us nuts? 
on our last nerve, ready to just, and we're ready to just haul off and slug that person. Who do you say that I am? Because that question is asked at every moment of every day of our lives. And its, and it's answer shows how we are part of the body of Christ, the church. And we need to continue to answer that and to grow in that. To become love so that we can be love. And become another Christ for this world. dedicate ourselves to our faith, rooted in the faith of the church, as we cry aloud with one voice, I believe in one God. praise God for his wisdom that is beyond our understanding. But we ask him for all our need because he shares his wisdom with us and uses us for his purposes. For our Pope Francis, the successor of St. Peter, that he may use the power of the keys wisely according to God's plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who accept the burden of public office, that the powers of evil may not prevail over them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those living with disabilities, that they may not be pushed aside, overlooked, or underestimated. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For ourselves, that we may reverence the power of the keys which God entrusts in his wisdom to the pastors of his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our sin especially Barbara Spisak and Annie Lawrence. Let us pray for the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the souls of the people of the that the merciful love of the Lord may cleanse and perfect them, especially John and Mary Ticus and Ed, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray for the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For cherishing of love, uh, cherishing of life from conception to natural death, and for each other and all of our needs, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Father, source of all wisdom, your Son entrusted his power to his church. As we <laughs> offer these prayers, help us to fulfill your plan for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The 
Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts can be found in your missalette, The Church's One Foundation, number 249.
your sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, grace to you may hold these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body, blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he sent the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my heart, which will be given up for you. Yes, 
not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. And as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, 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 Our communion hymn is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, in your missalettes, number 322.
Within us, O oh Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good 
Good afternoon. My name is Trustee Smith, and I've been a member of Matthew Conception Church since 1969. I made my first reconciliation, my first communion. I was confirmed here, made youth renewal, was married in this church, have taught PSR, been a member of Parish Life, and made women's renewal just this past October. I, like a lot of women sitting here today, had many excuses for not attending a women's renewal in the past when asked. I was busy. My children had a football game, soccer game, and maybe I had other commitments I needed to attend to. Or maybe it was because I didn't know what to expect, or maybe because I did know what was going to happen since I had made youth renewal many years ago. An event happened in my life that changed my outlook on what I need to be doing, and when I was asked in October last year to attend women's renewal, I fumbled with my words and really couldn't think of a reason to not attend. With the encouragement of my husband and my daughter, who was going to attend also, I signed up. Well, as you can see as I stand before you, it was a wonderful experience to not only strengthen my faith in Jesus, but to also grow my Catholic faith. Women's renewal this year is October 4th and 5th. It is a weekend of fellowship, love, faith, prayer, and self-reflection. I encourage all the women who are 19 older to consider coming to this weekend. I ask you to pray about it. We, the women's renewal team, have been praying for all of you. I will be in the gathering space after Mass if anyone has any questions. And thank you for your time and have a wonderful weekend. It's been my pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. I'll be back tomorrow morning, so in case you want to come back and see you know, the <laughs> too. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. God's blessing sends us forth in your missalettes, number 364. Oh, yeah.